Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. So recently I had a viewer ask me, hey, can you explain to me how to raise text up off of a board? And I said, I'd be happy to do that for you, John. I do have a V-carb inlay sign video tutorial. I also have a stacked text tutorial, and I'll leave links to those in the description if you're interested in those. But I said, John, you know what? Better than try to explain it through direct message. I said, let me make you a video and I'll add that to my library. Thank you for the idea, John. I really appreciate it. Before we begin, though, I want to point out that sign back there. That's a gift from Bucky's Customs, the welcome to the shop that's not the shop sign. So thanks, Bucky. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. And as I've said in the beginning of all of my tutorials, this is the way that I program to do the project that I'm working on. Now, Again, there's a hundred different ways to do this, but this is the way that I'm doing it. So let's go to new model. I happen to have a piece of wood out in the shop that I know I can use. So that wood is 14 inches wide. So let's make a sign that's roughly 10 so that I have some waste that I can cut off. Not 110, 10. And five and a half is a good height for it. Click OK and open up our work area. Now, I'm going to do this as basic as I can. I could get fancy and do step downs and create a raised portion that's another raised portion to the, raise the text, but I don't want to do that here. I want to make this as simple for y'all as I can. So to begin with, let's, let's click on the T down here for some text, and let's enter some text. What seems relevant to me would be hinkleshop.com, our website, and let's shrink it down a little bit so that it fits the project a little better. Let's click create over here on the right. Now we have our text. I'd like to adjust that just a little bit. Actually I'm going to hit F9 first. That pops it into the center. Then I'm going to hit the transform tool and I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit so that it looks better. And again this is all personal preference on your signs and whatever you're making. A lot of this is your own artistic impression of what you like. So now we have our text, very simple. The next thing we need to do is create a square around our work area. You can do this close to the text so that it only removes around the text. You can do your entire work area. That's entirely up to you. Now, before when I said I was going to make step downs, to do that I would have created the box around the text Let's click off the text here just a second. I would create the box around the text, do the area clearance on that box, create another box, go a little deeper, and another box, and go a little deeper, all using the area clearance tool paths, and it would create a step down or pyramid effect to the, the letters. Again, I'm not going to do that here because I want to keep this simple. The premise here is to show you how this is done, not how to get too fancy. So we're going to start with the entire piece and then we'll go out to the shop and I'll carve this and show you what it looks like. Go to your square tool, grab the corner. When it turns into a, a crosshair, you're on the corner. Stretch it out, drag it to the other side, crosshair again, release. Go to the right, roll down to create. If you don't click create, some of you may know this, some of you will learn the hard way. If you don't click create, the square will go away when you do your next click. Go to the selection tool. And here's all there is to creating this raised text without getting fancy again. You're going to highlight the square you just made and the text. So now you have both highlighted. You're going to go over to toolpaths and you're going to select an area clearance toolpath. Your start depth will be zero. Your finish depth will be whatever you desire. Now, typically I find, my opinion again, an eighth of an inch is plenty, 0.125 deep to raise your letters off the surface of your material. Now, if you wanted to, say, add um, epoxy or something as a back fill behind these letters, maybe you need to go a little deeper. But if we go an uh, eighth of an inch, that's deep enough for the project that I'm going to make. We need to add a tool. We're going to do this with an eighth inch end mill. You have to pick a tool that's small enough to fit in between the vectors when you do this. Vectors, letters, etc. If your tool is 
too big, it will stop and not cut out the letters. If it's too small, it's going to take you hours to finish this. Let me move this over so you can see it. Highlight it again so we don't lose the toolpath creation. If you have pawn CNC's collars or you have a, um, can't think of the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> that's funny. If you have a bit setter, that's what I was looking for. You can do this from a larger mill down to the smallest mill you have and get greater detail doing so. To do that, you would click on your add tool and add tool and add tool again. So starting out with a quarter of an inch in that case, you'd click add tool, then you'd grab your eighth inch end mill, click add tool, and it would grab your say 16th inch end mill. And you can adjust all of your feeds and speeds accordingly on those. When it begins to carve, it will start with the largest end mill first. That mill will do what it can. Then it'll drop. It'll stop and ask you to change tools. And it will go to the eighth inch and the sixteenth, etc. And when you're done, it'll be a very detailed piece. Again, I'm not going to go into all of that and show you how that's done. This is the most basic form of this. If you have to make the sign a little bigger to get your eighth inch end mill through there, then so be it. Uh, step over is fine. Step down is fine. I would slow your feed rate down depending on the <clears throat> intricacy of the letters, how detailed, how tiny the letters are. If you're moving too fast, in some cases, it will knock those letters right off of your board, and then you'll be starting over again. So if we slow the feed rate down, oh, to say 50, I think we'll be safe. Let's change the tool clearance strategy to offset the material thickness on what I'm using is a half of an inch thick. Click OK. Let's give it a name. Doesn't have to be anything specific here. We'll calculate. Let's close this menu out. Now as you can see it's going to remove, let's zoom in just a little, it's going to remove everything but your text and that's going to raise up the text. Let's simulate the toolpath so I can prove my point here. Simulate, holding down on the center button and rotating. Sometimes that's hard to see with the standard uh, material, so we'll go back and click on simulation once more. We'll come down here on the bottom where it says rendering, and we'll change from the simulation default to, I like medium oak when I'm doing this. It seems to work well for my old eyes. Click apply. It changes it to that. We'll rotate it again. Let's zoom in a little bit and you can see that you have raised text. That's all there is to it folks. Create a border around your text. Do an area clearance. Let the machine hog away what is not the text and it will pick it up off of the surface. All right let's go out to the shop that is the shop and see if I can wreck another board. All right so here we are in the shop that is the shop. Luckily for me, I've got this old piece of MDF here that was from a different project. I had already painted it up and surfaced it. Uh, so when we cut the letters out, the letters will be this color. The background will be this color. I've got the machine already zeroed out, all ready to go. I've got my on CNC dust boot on here. I want to show you those collars that I was talking about. Those are pawn CNC collars. They make it so that you can change tools without having to have a bit setter. I'll leave a link to Pawn CNC in the description also. Um, you can check out those things. You can help me out a little bit. I get a little kickback from it if you buy from them. You get the same price, but I get a little bit to help support the channel. So let's rock and roll and see if I can wreck this piece of MDF. Okay, everybody, so you know the golden rule of the Hinkle shop. When Vernon makes a mistake, he shows you the mistake. The mistake I made was I put an upcut bit in that mill 
and not a down cut bit. When you do these letters, I highly recommend you use a down cut bit so that it protects the letters and doesn't lift them out. Now we got a couple of boo-boos. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you. It's not catastrophic. I can fix it. I'll be able to use it. I'm not gonna throw it away, but we got a couple of little pieces that we got from the pullout and we got some more paint. We'll get it buttoned up and we'll get it fixed. Let me spin the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. So right, let me get a pointer here. You probably already can see it. So right there, right there, and right there, the upcut bit grabbed the MDF, which is not very strong. I highly recommend maple too, if you're gonna do this. Maple's a good one, and so is black walnut for doing these letters. But for this demonstration, MDF it is. I'll glue these back in with some CA glue with the little pieces I have, and I'll get this paint back out, and I'll just touch up those letters. In the time being though, I'm gonna take this over, and I think I'm gonna cut maybe a one inch border all the way around this sign. So we'll get it on the table saw and we'll do that now. So I had a better idea. I took this scrap guy that I left laying, and I sliced out the legs. I don't know if you can see that, but it gives me the paint already. And I will take those little bad sections off, and I will CA glue this back in. Just like that, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's do that in the shop. That's not the shop. I guess the moral of this story is, aside from the tutorial, is when you have a project like this that's got some damage, don't just throw it away. Look for some alternatives to fixing it. And my alternative here is going to be this X-Acto knife. And I'm going to trim off what I don't want right there. And I'm going to work until I get this piece off. Might take a little effort, but I think we can do it. There it goes. Quite simply. And we're going to take our piece that's the repair piece and we're going to put him in here. Measure how long it needs to be. Now what I did was sliced it an eighth of an inch tall and what I saw as as close to this width as possible. And we're going to put him in here. I've had too much coffee today. I'm shaking to try and do this. But we're going to put him in. I don't know if my hand is allowing you to see this. I'll move my hand. We're going to cut it off to that length. A little bit of pressure. I've marked it. Choose this instead of my table. So we're going to just work it. There he is. Let's see if I can do this in a way where you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take some CA glue and I'm going to put this piece on here. Maybe a little touch up paint. And bang, bang, boom, you'll be in good shape. Okay, y'all, there you have it. Raised letter sign. I guess the moral of the story is, if I leave the camera a little blurry, you can't see the mistakes from your house. <laughs> That's not true. But it shows you, don't throw away your projects. I've shown you how to do raised letters. I've shown you how to make a repair. As my dad used to say when we were building barns back in New York, if he made a mistake, he'd say, we're not building a church, son, but he'd still fix it anyway because it had to be right with him. Now, if I was selling this to somebody, I would do it over. I wouldn't send it out the door with that mistake in it. But this will hang up in my shop just fine. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it taught you something. I hope you maybe laughed at my nonsense. As always, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll catch you on the next one.